Well, how much access should political parties have to your personal information? Should there be more limits? Big questions remain today after an email from the Office of Immigration Minister Jason Kenney went out to gay and lesbian voters. Some recipients don't understand how their sexual orientation had landed them on a list. Their information was automatically sent to Kenny's email address when they signed a petition on another LGBT issue. That's for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered people. Does contacting a politician mean they can contact you about other issues down the road? Should there be more restrictions on how they use your data? Well, joining me now is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Immigration Minister, Rick Dykstra, the NDP critic for digital issues, Charmaine Borg, and Liberal MP, Joyce Murray. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Well, Rick, let me start with you. What sure. happened here? Did the minister's office harvest online data from this petition, or did they only keep the emails of people who directly contacted the minister's uh, constituency office directly? Well, that's specifically what it was. Uh, any of those in that specific case, we're talking a, a couple of years back about a Nicaraguan individual who was seeking uh, asylum here in Canada based on... Uh, uh, on the fact that they were gay and uh, they were asked, uh, they, they had lost their first uh, uh, appeal and were seeking second appeal and obviously uh, eventually were successful in terms of uh, uh, getting a refugee status here in Canada on humanitarian and compassionate ground. The individuals who signed uh, a petition, a petition was put online, individuals who signed up for that petition actually automatically sent an email uh, with their um, uh, with their connection uh, to their their residence, but, was my, sent but my question, to the, Rick, is does that give someone like Jason Kenney or other politicians the right to use that information much later on a different issue? Well, it wasn't used on a different issue. It was to update individuals on exactly what was happening uh, within that um, exact same type of issue with respect to to gay rights. So uh, they, you know, many of us, all of us as members of Parliament, all 308, regardless of partisanship, when we receive an email or receive a note or receive a request into our office, our first uh, our first course of action is to respond directly uh, to that individual on the subject of matter that they have uh, inquired about. This is exactly what happened well, here. Happened our year, office this, was this completely... This came back a year and a half later, though. Fair uh, I mean, a year and a half later. And, and the res hey, listen, the refugee process in this country it takes anywhere from two to ten years to complete. So uh, the time frame that you're referring to is, is insignificant compared to the time frame it could take an individual to actually seek refugee and achieve refugee okay, status let, here let, in the country. Let me, let me bring the others in here. Charmaine Borg, I want to show our viewers what this petition actually said. It specifically says, and I think we have a board of this, to Jason Kenney and the Department of Citizenship and Immigration Canada. Further down, it says that uh, email Jason Kenny and provides both his email for his MP's office and his ministerial email. So, my question to you, Charmaine, isn't it reasonable that if people are emailing the minister directly, that his office can send information back to them? Well, it is normal for MPs to uh, be able to contact their citizens again or citizens of other uh, ridings to be able to keep them informed on certain federal issues. Uh, but I do think that there are a lot of privacy concerns going on right now and, and people who uh, go online want to feel safe in that environment and I think this is part of a larger question. What, uh, how are companies using our personal information? There is a very fine line here and uh, and I think that time and time and again we have seen the Conservative Party cross this line. We've seen it with Bill C-30 where they're just willing to go get personal information without a warrant. Well, hang on. We've, yeah, that line, this draw that line for us. What is that line? For, as far as the NDP is concerned, what's the line? I think we need to be looking at that. I think we need to be seeing what is that line exactly, and that's that's why I've introduced uh, a study to uh, a study to uh, in, in my committee to study these issues uh, for social media companies. But maybe we need to be looking at this question a little bit more globally. Right, what well, exactly is that line? So I just want to make clear. So when the New Democrats, you, for instance, get an email from somebody that has their email address in return, you, you don't keep that information? You don't use it for uh, collecting information about who might be interested in issues that you cover? Well, let me give you an example. When I go door to door in my riding, um, so if someone tells me they're really interested about the environment, I will ask them, would you like to stay informed about issues that we're working on concerning the environment? And they will often say yes or no, and I do take that in note, and I will keep them in contact. So I do think that, uh, once again, it's a fine line, and I think we need to be studying that. Okay, Joyce Murray, sorry to keep you waiting for yeah. so long. Um, I'll ask you the same question. Yeah. Do the Liberals and other political parties, does everyone make use of this kind of, I'll call it data mining, to collecting yeah. personal information to keep in contact with people who might share like-minded ideas who might be able to be raised money from? I didn't put that right, but you could raise money from yeah. them. Yeah, well, I think all <laughs> parties... Uh, I want to stay in contact with people, but a norm would be to have a checkbox and say, if, if you 
uh, receive the person's information for, through a petition, for example, uh, to send an email saying, would you like to receive information and on what issues? And if you would like not to be on our list, check here. So I think it's, uh, it's interesting that there might be a, a committee looking at that, what does cross the line. But what I, what I want to say is what really crosses the line is for a conservative minister that in a, a government that has presided over a, a lot of undermining of the G, GLBT community uh, to come out and do this tactic. And I think the community itself is, is up in arms and, and they're actually outraged by this well, I'm, because I'm of guess, the hypocrisy. I, I'm guessing Rick Dykstra might disagree with that. Yeah, right? I completely 100% <laughs> disagree. We've taken strong affirmative action, whether it's here in Canada, whether it's at the United Nations, whether it's within the Commonwealth. Uh, any time that we've had the opportunity, whether it's uh, the, the Ugandan piece of legislation that was passed that was, was, was anti-gay, uh, then Lawrence Cannon, uh, Minister of, of Foreign Affairs, stood up immediately to declare that uh, wrong and, and petition the Ugandan government to, to retract that legislation. We can talk about uh, the efforts that we have made at the Commonwealth, the efforts we have made in Africa, the efforts we've made right here in Canada. Why is it just because you're gay, you're not supposed to get information from the government to update them on what the government is doing? If that's what my colleagues are suggesting here, that is completely wrong. Would, and if they're going, also yeah. going to say that a petition, somebody privately does a petition and they're supposed to put a check mark beside whether or not they want the minister to respond directly, the petition has nothing to do with the federal government. Each and every one of those petitions, were, as they sign and were forwarded directly by the individual organized petition to Minister Kennedy. Of course he's going to respond to that issue if that's what the individual wants in terms of sending in that request. I, I just want, I want to, I think, compartmentalize all the issues I'm hearing. One is that there should be some kind of study about when it's right for politicians to contact. Uh, the other is over well, whether it's... I don't need a study on that. I know exactly what I need to do to communicate with my constituents back home. And I think that, that effectively... Well, I don't think that's what we're talking well, about. Well, I don't think anybody should be taking but, lessons from the Conservative Party who have fallen farther and farther behind with privacy legislation. PIPA is already up for review again, and they still haven't even passed C-12 yet. So I wouldn't take any lessons from this government. Yeah. Okay. And, and what this community is saying is, do, do you think we're stupid? In, to be uh, presenting the Conservative uh, government and, why the, you mock the, and the Minister of, of Immigration uh, as a positive for the GBLT community, when it's that minister himself actually that appointed openly homophobic uh, oh. uh, judges to the uh, to the refugee board, when, when it, that's that, that minister that puts it forward. False. That is Bill completely C31 untrue. That takes That's an away the right to that appeal choice. You cannot prove of in refugees any way, shape, or form. that come from uh, so, so-called safe no. countries who may be leaving because that country is not uh, safe for somebody that's uh, that's from the queer, queer community. So no the community has itself made a stronger is really stand up than in Canada arms. with respect to Iran and, they don't and refugees. Think, uh, who come people want to be at a, only one of you at a time. Let Rick Dexter respond to that. You know that is Joyce. That is completely completely offside. You've, you've to, to say that the minister first of all appoints uh, individuals to the IRB. It is done through an, an, a process upon which you never followed, your party never followed when you were in government. These are independently appointed individuals and they have nothing to do whether whether or not they support or don't support the gay okay, community. Let me, let me, one and last furthermore, no, it's important to get this out here. If we're going to hear these sweeping allegations, I should at least be able to respond to say how untrue it's and not factual It's actually the community are. that are making these allegations, no. not myself. All right, let's, I, I, just, I want one last quick question, mm -hmm. yes or no. Uh, Rick Dykstra, should there be a, a, a study into the appropriateness of communications and the protection of people's privacy when they contact politicians? Look, there are privacy concerns that always exist. It doesn't matter what level of government or what part of the private sector you're in or what part of the government you're involved with. Privacy needs to be respected, but there is also, in, in this day and age, with respect to social media and our ability to speak with so our constituents... So is that a yes or a no? We absolutely need to be able to contact individuals. Okay, that's a no. Country. Charmaine Board? Well, yes, I do think we need to be looking at privacy within the digital area in a very large way. I mean, we need to look at how, how companies are using our personal information, and we need to, to be looking forward and acting proactively for these measures okay, and not falling behind. Joyce Murray? Yes, and, and Chris, I was the minister responsible for the Freedom of Information and Personal Privacy Act in British Columbia for over a year. I know how deeply care about people care about the privacy of their personal information, and it is always appropriate to update how we are handling personal information right. in I a changing to, world. I have to leave it there. Thank you to Rick Dykstra, Charmaine Borg, and Joyce Murray joining me from the foyer of the House of Commons. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks.